The accompanying table shows the tax in dollars on a pack of cigarettes in 30 randomly selected cities. Complete parts A through G below. Okay, the first part we want to construct the frequency distribution of the data using a first class having a lower class limit of 0 and a class width of 0 0.50. Let's go ahead and click our data. So we have our data, our full data. Okay, and so you can see here that our values are 2.86, so it goes to two decimal places. And so since it goes to two decimal places, it's going to allow us to be able to figure out what our upper class limit is going to be. So let's go ahead and determine what is the lower class limit. Well, we know that the lower class limit is zero, which means that the next lower class limit is going to be 0 0.50, okay? which means the one below that would be 0 0.49. Okay, so how do we know that? Well, let's go ahead and first determine how would this look on our uh, frequency distribution table. So let's open this up in the stack crunch. So now that we opened it up in the stack crunch, the next step is we want to create a frequency distribution table. So we're going to go to stat, Go to Tables, and then select Frequency. Okay, and now let's go ahead and put in, well, let's go ahead and title our, our column to be Tax. And then let's start again by going to Stat, and then Tables, and then Frequency. So we're going to select Tax. We're going to scroll down to where it says Frequency. Okay, and then it says Bin Numerical Values. Well, we're going to do that by writing the following, okay? We're going to start at 0, a lower class limit, and the width is 0 0.50, okay? And so go ahead, let's go ahead and compute. So there is our value. So from 0 to 0 0.5, now remember, in StatCrunch, we're not going to repeat 0 0.5. That means it should be 0 0.49, and then we should get a frequency of 4, okay? Let's check our answer. And there's our result. Now let's do the next one. Okay, the next one's going to be starting at 0 0.5, and it's going to go to 1. But remember, this is two decimal places, so this is going to be 0 0.50, and this is going to be 0 0.99. And then the frequency for that is going to be 9. And so let's check our answer, and there's our result. Now, and next here, we know that our lower class limit is adding 1, or adding 0.5, so this is going to be 1, okay, and then if you take a look here, we have 1, and it goes to 1.5, but that should be 1.49, so we have 1.49, and then the frequency for that is 4. Okay, and then next, the next class we have 1.5 to 2, so that means we're going to go from 1.5 and this is going to be 1.99. And then the frequency for that class is 5. Okay, now we're going to start at 2. And then we're going to go to 2.49, as you see from here. And again, let's check here. We have 2 to 2.49, and it has a frequency of 3. Check our answer. Okay, next. We're going to go from 2.5 to 3, but technically that's going to be 2.5 to 2.99. So it's 2.5 to 2.99. And then our frequency is 2. Okay, next. We're going to start at 3 and then go to 3.49. So it's 3, and then 3.49, and then the frequency for that one is 2. Now let's take a look at the next class. Well, you can see we go straight from 3 to 4, and we don't have an in-between, but we have to include that class because there's a zero frequency according to what our stat crunch is telling us. So that means it's going to go from 3.5 to 3.99, and that frequency is going to be zero since we don't have one for that class. Okay, and then we have our last one that finishes at four to four point four nine. 
So that's going to be 4 to 4.49. And then it has a frequency of 1. And let's check our answer. And there is our result. Okay, now we want to be able to construct a relative frequency distribution. So the next thing we want to do is, all we need to do is come here and select Options, select Edit, and then just change this to Relative Frequency, and then select Compute. Now we have our relative frequency. Now it also tells us to round it to two decimal places. The only thing that's nice here in this sense is that it's still going to be the same classes. It's going to be 0 to 0 0.49. So we have 0 to 0 0.49. And then we have, rounded to two decimal places, is 0 0.13. Let's check our answer. Okay, and then we have 0 0.50 to 0 0.99. And that frequency is 0 0.30. So relative frequency is 0 0.30. And that's our result. Okay, the next one is 1 to 1.49 so 1 to 1.49 and if we look at that frequency round it to two decimal places is 0 0.13 okay the next one we have the class that goes from 1.5 to 1.99 so we have 1.5 to 1.99 and the frequency for that is 0 0.166. We have to round it to two decimal places, which is 0 0.17. 0 0.17. Let's check our answer. Okay, next we have the next class, which goes from 2 to 2.49. So 2 to 2.49. And we have a relative frequency of 0 0.10. Okay, and then next, we're going from 2.5 to 2.99. And 2.5 to 2.99 is 0 0.07 if we round that to two decimal places. Okay, next, we're going from 3 to 3.49. So 3 to 3.49. And that gives us 0 0.07. So from 3 to 3.49 is 0 0.07. Now we need to look at the next class that's in between 3 and 4. Well, we don't have a frequency, relative frequency for that, but we do need to include that. So 3.5 to 3.99 is going to have 0. Okay, and then the last one is going to go from 4 to 4.49, and the relative frequency rounded to three decimal, two decimal places is 0 0.03. Okay, now we want to construct a frequency histogram of the data. So let's open this back up in the stack crunch. Okay, and so what we're going to do now is we're going to go to graph. And then we're going to select histogram. Okay, now remember that our lower class uh, limit is 0, and we have a class width of 0 0.50. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So we're going to graph histogram. We're going to select our column. We want frequency. We're starting at 0. We know that our width is going to be 0 0.50. And then we want our values above the bar. Okay, we also know that the x-axis label is cigarette tax rate. And that's in dollars. The y-axis is our frequency. And let's just go ahead and construct that from here. So here we have our frequency or regular uh, frequency histogram distribution so it looks like a and c doesn't match because you can see that this one 
um, is the same here, and then we don't have one for there. Now let's take a look over here. If we look at B, it doesn't look like that. If we look at D, it looks like our choice is going to be D. Okay, now I want to construct a relative frequency distribution, so let's go ahead and do that. So all we need to do is come in here, select Options, and then select Edit. Okay, and then we got to pick the fact that the type now is going to be relative frequency. And then we just need to change the y-axis label to be a relative frequency. And so now we should have the same look as the previous one. The only thing is now we have a y-axis that is relative frequency. So if we take a look at A, it doesn't match. C looks like it possibly can match. Okay, if we look at B, it doesn't look like that, or D. So it looks like our choice is going to be C. Okay, now it says describe the shape of the distribution. So it increases at the beginning, and then it starts tailing off to the right. So that means that this is a skewed right distribution. Now we're going to repeat parts E, A, and E using a class width of 1. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back in here, and then we're going to then uh, select our stack crunch. Now if you close this out, what you're going to see is there's a 2 up here. And what that means is the results are hidden. We're going to go back to the result of the frequency table for tax. So we're going to go ahead and select that. And then now that's going to bring back what we've already done. And now up here, you're just going to select Options and then select Edit. Okay, and we want now the frequency. Okay, because it's asking us for a frequency distribution. But now what we're going to do is now we're going to use a class width of 1. Okay, so let's go ahead and do that. So if we put in a class width of 1, now we get the following. So that means we're going to go from 0, and this is going to be 1, but that should be 0.99. So that's 0 to 0 0.99 with a frequency of 13. Okay, and then the next one is going from 1, and that's going to be 1.99. So that's 1 to 1.99. And the frequency is 9. The next one is going to start at 2, and it's going to go to 2.99. So 2, 2.99. And we have 5 as the frequency. The next one goes from 3 to 4, which is the same thing as 3 to 3.99. So this is going to go from 3 to 3.99. And that is a frequency of 2. And then the last class is going from 4 that to 4.99. So 4 to 4.99. And that has a frequency of 1. Okay, now we're going to do the relative frequency distribution with that same class width. So now all we need to do is come in here, select Options, select Edit, and now change our frequency to relative frequency and now select compute and now it's telling us to then round to two decimal places so that means we're going to have the same classes here so we're going to have 0, 0 0.99 and then we got to round that relative frequency to two decimal places which is 0 0.43 check our answer there's our result, and the next class is going from 1 to 1.99, and we have 0 0.30, 0 0.30. Okay, the next one's going from 2 to 2.99, and that rounds to three, two decimal places to be 0 0.17.
And then we're going to go from 3 to 3.99. And that rounded to two decimal places is 0 0.07. And then we go from 4 to 4.99. And so that's rounded to two decimal places, 0 0.03. Let's check our answer. And there's our relative frequency distribution. Now we want to construct a frequency distribution with that same class width. So now what we're going to do is we can just now close this again. And we can come back in here and then go to the results of the hidden and now we're going to go down to the histogram for tax. So we're going to do that and now we're going to go to options and then select edit. Now we want to make sure that we're constructing a frequency histogram. Now what has to change is the class width. So we're still starting at zero but now the class width is at one and then everything else is going to be the same. Everything is already in there. So let's select compute and let's take a look. So it doesn't look like it's A, it doesn't look like it's C. It looks like it's going to be B, because it has the same shape. Let's check our answer, and there's our result. Now we want to construct a relative frequency distribution. So what we do now is just go ahead and select Option, select Edit, make sure we have relative frequency, distribu or relative frequency. select Compute, and then you can see that it's going to have the same shape. So it looks like our answer is going to be C. Okay, now describe the shape of the distribution. So it's going to start very high and it's going to tail off to the right. So that means the distribution is going to be skewed right. Okay, now it says, does one frequency distribution provide a better summary of the data than the other? So we would say that both distributions have a similar shape, so either works well, and that would be our result.